Hey y'all, today I'm gonna be making a home cooked dinner, which includes my mama's chicken and noodles and some crescent rolls using our Ninja Foodie and our Ninja Foodie digital oven. All we're having a whole lot of fun. Those noodles have plumped up and they're really soaking up all that broth. Hey y'all, welcome back to another Foodie Friday here, brought to you from RecipesThatCrock.com, my beautiful wife's cooking blog, and I am Mikey, and today I'm just going to be making a whole bunch of comfort food. I told y'all in the Facebooks earlier this week that I could tell you I'm doing this because I need to show you how you can use different gadgets in the Foodie, the, in the foodie Multiverse, if you will, uh, to make some really good home-cooked food. Really? I'm just missing some comfort food. I'm kind of missing my mom right now. This whole quarantine thing means I can't go and see my mom like I want to, give her hugs, and maybe eat some of her food. So I'm going to make it here because one thing that mom taught me how to do well was to make some good comfort food. And so this is going to be a really good day for me because I'm going to be making her homemade chicken and noodles and I'm going to be making some crescent rolls. Now, got to be honest with you, those crescent rolls are made from Pillsbury. They're just the kind you get in the canyon and roll out. But I'm going to use my foodie oven here to see how well that it does baking uh, using the baking feature and then I'm also going to be cooking the chicken and noodles using our foodie. Where is the foodie? Well it's sitting over there because we don't need it for this first part because this is not going to be a really quick meal. This is something I got to put a little work into which is okay. If you want comfort food sometimes you need to put a little work into it. I am scrimping on some things like for instance I'm going to use the crescent rolls instead of making my mama's I am going to use Pillsbury. I am going to have mashed potatoes but that's coming straight from Bob Evans not from me. But these noodles are made from scratch so I'm feeling really good about it and I'm going to cook a whole chicken using pretty much our butter chicken method uh, in the foodies pressure cooker. But we don't need to worry about that yet. The first thing we need to do is we got to make the noodles because that's the longest step. And what you're going to need for the noodles are the following ingredients. You need three eggs right here. You need a heaping quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Now a heaping teaspoon versus a teaspoon, I'm guessing, and this is my mom's way of telling me how to do this, is if you look, and I'll come up there and show you, and if you look on there, it's got that little part left over where you open the can up, and that's so when you scoop out your uh, baking powder, then you can run the top of your spoon across that flat part, and that flattens it out to give it a flattened out full measurement of whatever you're doing, whether it's a quarter teaspoon or full teaspoon, whatever. But a heaping is where you dig in there and you leave it rounded over the top. So that's what I did, just like my mama told me to. You also need a teaspoon of salt, and then you need about a cup of flour. This is going to be depending on your eggs, your uh, your altitude. There's a whole bunch of factors. So I'm going to leave my flour out because I know I'm going to need some more later. But to start off with, I'm going to take my eggs and put them in a bowl along with my teaspoon of salt and my heaping quarter teaspoon of baking powder and I just want to get that mixed up pretty well until all that baking powder gets wet. It's going to look clumpy in there. Uh, baking powder doesn't mix all that well to start off with. It doesn't mix smoothly. So there's going to be chunks in there. That's fine. Just kind of mix it up good. You're not trying to make a meringue here. So I don't want to beat that until it's frothy. I just want to beat it enough to where the, the yolks are all mixed together. The salt's all mixed in. And then I've pretty much got that baking powder mixed in there. Doesn't have to look perfect, it's fine. And then this is where me and my mama are gonna differ. Because mom would put this in a bowl and then she would mix it all together with her hands. Put it out on a counter and roll it out. I'm gonna test my standalone mixer here and see just how well that it works so that I can save my hands. Now mom loves to do this. She loves to make noodles and rolls, anything in baking where she has to knead things. She always says that's how she would work out her aggressions. And she would make rolls or something and, and knead, and kneading and pounding that dough is something that made her feel good. I'm okay today. I don't need to let out my aggressions. All I want to do is make noodles. So I have my dough hook attachment on here. Oop, about knocked my flour off. And I'm just going to mix this in slowly. A little bit at a time. Probably about maybe 10% of that flour. 
little bit more. I'll put in about half the flour. That way it'll start to mix in with those eggs. Huh. I might have to mix this part myself because it's not really reaching down in there like I want it to. Now oh, there it goes. We're doing good. A little bit more flour. Yeah. So this is a learning thing for me too. I need to make sure that that flour gets mixed in with that egg a little better than what it is. So you're watching me learn right now. I can probably do it just with a dough hook. We get it mixed in there enough, it should start to mix it itself. There we go. Now it's starting to pick up all that flour. So pretty much I'm doing it like mom would do, only I'm using a dough hook. All right, there we go. Now we'll put it back in there. That there, that there. And then pop her up. And now we'll let the dough hook do its thing. So as you can see, that's why it's going to take a little bit more than a cup because that is nowhere near the consistency we need. We need a dough ball, not a dough soup. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour. And hopefully that little bit of flour will help us out. Let's see. All right, we're starting to get there. See how it's still sticking on the bottom? So I need just a little bit more flour in there. All right, now we'll crank her up. All right, so I'm gonna have to mix that up a little bit by hand here. And it has been quite a while since I've made Mama's noodles so I'm a little rusty I know we've been using like the frozen Rayo's noodles anytime that we do noodles like that but I just kind of wanted that home cooked you know, that home cooked taste and sometimes you just feel better when you make it yourself you know all right so I clean off my hook yeah see it's kind of I don't know if you can see or not but it kind of got stuck on the bottom because that hook doesn't go all the way down because you don't want to scratch your bowl but I can work with that so let me wash my hands real quick All right, I will slide my flour to the side. And now I'll go ahead and just knead this out in the bowl. I'm done with that. You want to gather up all that flour that you can until you get a dough ball, just like that. So you had to do a little kneading yourself, but, and what you're looking for in this dough is for it to be stretchy where it might not break apart but not be sticky either so I definitely want to go back in there and get the rest of that flour and the other thing you're looking for is it to all be consistent you don't want little chunks of flour everywhere and then have runny parts in other places you want it to be one good consistent dough ball oh yeah and it's probably a good idea too to remove your rings especially if they've got little spots on them that can pick out the dough Not this ring though, wedding ring stays on. Sorry ladies. All right, so once you've got a good ball of dough that's all evenly put together, I'm trying to make sure I get all that in there because I don't want any of that to go to waste because that's good stuff right there. This is gonna make a good batch of noodles. And I know this might not look like much this is a lot of noodles, y'all, whenever you roll them out. And I'm not done with that flour either. So that's gonna make even more noodles out of this. I think I need to add just a little bit more flour because it's still a little sticky. You're not looking for sticky. You're looking just for a big ball of dough that easily lets go of your hand. Whenever you let go of the dough, it lets go of you. You don't want it to be sticky. And that was just a little, a little bit more flour will go a long, long way. 
But again, this is the part where it's going to take time. This is not a quick cooking recipe. These noodles are not a quick noodle at all. Here we go. Now we're starting to break apart, so we should be able to be done with this part of it really soon. Yeah. There we go. A little bit more. So me trying to use the mixer to speed up that process helped a little. But when mama watches this, she'll just say, why just didn't you do it all with your hands? Because it just took as much time. And it probably did, but that's okay. My thing is I was trying to save my hands because I've been playing so much guitar here lately, playing the online shows and practicing and learning new music and writing new songs, my left hand is starting to feel it. And I kind of want to save my hand as much as possible for some upcoming shows I've got. All right, that should be good. Yeah. That right there will work. It's not sticky. It comes off of your hands. And this is the dough ball that you come up with when you're done. Looks just like that. So it's about the size of a cat's head if you wanna look, if you wanna go for scale. That's what one, about a cup and a half of flour and three eggs with salt and baking powder will get you. And now the next step is, I need this whole workstation here. So I'm gonna clean off this station so that we can roll out the noodles, just like this. And there we have a clean workstation. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take some flour and I want to dust my countertop. There we go, that's good. And then I want to take my dough ball and put it right in there. I have a big work area here and that's good because this is going to make a lot, a lot, lot of noodles. And now I want to do is one, oops, almost forgot. I want to make sure that I cover my rolling pin in flour too because I don't want this to stick at all to my rolling pin and then roll out the noodles, just like that. When you start to see that you're losing your flour on the bottom, just kind of make sure you get it coated back up because you definitely don't want this to stick to your counter or whatever you're rolling it out on. But I want to roll this really, really thin and this is even going to work in more flour into the dough. So again, that little bitty cat's head sized ball of dough is going to make a lot of noodles, like a lot, lot. And I grew up in a big family, so when mom was making noodles, she had to make a lot, lot. As you can see, I want to keep dust in both sides so it doesn't stick to the counter. I also want to make sure I don't dump a bunch of flour on the floor. I'm pretty sure Ollie'd get into it, and then we'd have a snow white puppy. That'd be a mess to clean up later. All right. You know what? Mom was right. This is a good way to work out your aggressions. It's a good exercise. Of course, after all these cars, I'm definitely going to need the exercise for sure. So I want to cut a hole in it. What you're looking at for thickness on these noodles is about an eighth of an inch. You're not making dumplings. The thicker you get them, the more you're looking at making dumplings. The thinner you get it, the more it'll be more, it's just like your egg noodles like you get at the store. So you want to roll it out pretty thin. Now I try as much as I can to roll this into a rectangle or a square shape, something where I can cut it evenly. And I also, even though I tell you to roll this out to an eighth of an inch, when we get out towards the edges, I'll save some of that where it's a little bit thicker because I kind of like dumplings with mine too. So it's chicken and noodles and dumplings all together. But there we go. And now, once I've got this rolled out, just like that, what I want to do is I want to make sure this 
top portion here is very, very, very coated with flour. And that's because when you roll this up, you don't want you don't want it to stick to itself before you make your cuts. So all that flour that was left over, put it on top of your noodles just like that. All right, it's not noodles yet, but put it on top of your dough just like that. That way when you go to cut and separate the noodles, they'll all separate a lot easier. Okay? So now we've done that, and now we just want to roll. Just make one. It doesn't have to be super tight. You're just rolling it up, just like that. Bring it in, and as you can see on the bottom, it's yellow. That's where you rolled it out. I'll even put a little on there. That's why you definitely want to coat that top portion of your dough with your flour because you don't want that to stick because that's a pain in the neck to separate when they stick. So I'm just going to keep coating that as I roll it up. Just like that. That's good. All right, that's going to be some good noodles. Now, let me wash off my hands real quick. Definitely dry them because you need dry, dry hands for this. And let me grab a colander. All right, hands are dry. And let me grab a knife. And I'm going to cut this dough in half. Like that. I'm going to do this in quarters. That way it's a lot easier to handle. And then once I've got the dough cut in half, that way I'm going to go long ways with it. Like that. And then it, see how it falls apart like that? So I'm going to do that, these other three. floured out there that tells me I did a good job of coating that with flour and now so they look like great big pieces like that and now I want to cut them oh probably about a half an inch as, as long as I want them that way each one of these looks like that that is a noodle And I'll just cut these up the rest the same way. And like that. And now what I want to do is I'll go ahead and so I'm not putting it all over the counter. The bowl that I mix this in, I'm going to take a colander and put on top there. And then carefully try not to mash the noodles together. Put them in there. And you give them a shake, and that shakes off the excess flour and it separates the noodles out. And I'll do it in small batches at a time. Okay, I don't overload myself and yeah, those separate out real nice. Lay them out. Do that again. And 
get as much of it in the bowls I or yeah in the big bowls I can instead of the counter but I still got a mess I have to clean up you want to try and get shake off as much of that excess flour as possible just like that not bad and then we'll do it one more time I did a good job. Those noodles were separating out really, really nice. All right, that part's done. Now I got to clean this up real quick. Done with this. Done with the knife. Now, I've got this mostly cleaned off. There's still a little bit of flour on. That's fine because what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these noodles over to this side of the counter. You want to make sure they're kind of uncurled because what you got to do now is the really hard part. There might still be some that didn't separate too well, but what I want to do is I want to lay these out and I want to let them dry. Uh, an hour if you can. The longer you dry them, the better. It's fine, but I want to let mine dry for at least an hour. Like I said, this is not a quick cooking recipe. This is a home cooked, made from scratch, put some time and effort into it recipe. And frankly, if I'm going to have carbs, I want it to be the best carbs I could possibly make. So this is where it takes a little time. You want to kind of just kind of let them separate out. I, mean, I could put them and I probably should put them on a rack, but all I want to do is kind of let them dry. Oh, there's one for the dogs. I just kind of want to let them dry out. So I'm going to spread them out as good as I can and let this be my noodle area. And now I'll clean up the rest of my workstation over there because now it's time to prepare the chicken. All right, now it's time to prepare our chicken. In our foodie, we have a whole chicken. That is an almost six pound chicken. And to that, I'm going to add a cup and a half of chicken broth. One recipe that we have will tell you to add a cup. That's because we were using our six quart foodie. Uh, but right now I'm using the eight quart foodie because, well, our six quart foodie died the other day. Addie knocked it off the counter. It didn't go well. I'm also going to add a whole stick of butter. A little bit of salt. Maybe a little bit more. It's a big chicken. And you know how much pepper I'm going to use. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Put my lid on it. And remember how long for Chris said to cook it. And I'm going to go for 15 minutes because this is a whole bone-in chicken. And I'm hoping that that works. But what I want to do is I'm going to set this on high for 15 minutes. Let's it come up to pressure. It's going to ride that pressure, push that butter and that broth and the salt and pepper into the chicken. And then after 15 minutes, I'm going to let that natural release for another 15. So we're looking at probably about... 35 minutes for this to go which is perfect because that'll make these noodles sit and dry for about an hour but you'll see the chicken whenever it's done in three two one 35 minutes in the pressure cooker not 15 for a whole chicken my wife corrected my mistake so the chicken is done we'll bring this baby out and that is a whole chicken coming out we'll sit this one here for now and see if we can bring it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's done. It's falling apart. The thighs and legs, the quarters came off. That's a good sign. That's going to be some good chicken. And that is going to be some really, really good rich stock too. But I definitely want to make sure that all the bones, I don't really care if, they, if some of the skin stays in, but like the wings, we need that to come out. Oh my goodness, that smells so good, y'all. Yeah, we gotta make sure we get all the bones out of there. I'll take some of that skin out too. But what I'm left with down there is a really, really good smelling stock. There we go, there's the other wing. I can get it out of there. Come on, get out of there. All right, and now the fun part. 
now to deconstruct this chicken because I don't need the bones for sure and it's going to be super super hot. Let me grab a bowl. Put all this meat in. But I let this go uh, for the 35 minutes like I said big correction there and then uh, it let it come down on its own in pressure so I didn't have to worry about doing a release but that is still super super hot. But the cool thing is about how tender that chicken is the bones are coming right out of the meat with no problem whatsoever but I gotta work kinda gingerly here to not burn myself let me grab a couple forks I could go ahead and let this cool but frankly I'm hungry so I'm ready to get the rest of this going remember like I said this is a long this is a long cooking recipe this is a long process but the reward in the end is so much better. Mm. Oh yeah. That meat is good and tender and juicy. What I want to do is strip off all the meat from the chicken. So that's what I'm going to do now is deconstruct my chicken. One fond memory I've got from when I was a kid was when mom would do a chicken like this and there was a time where we even raised our own chickens, so you want to talk about farm fresh. And when mom would go to take all the meat off the bone, I'd get in a lot of trouble because I'd be sitting there, and every time she'd turn around, I'd sneak a piece of chicken. So, mm, I think she didn't mind too much, though, because there, there was always enough for everybody, but she let me pick meat off the bone with her. I think she'd leave a little bit on some of the bones just so I'd have something to chew on. Now, there's not that much meat on the wings, so if you get it, great. If you don't, this is the fun part. That's the best part to snack on while you're doing this. Mm-mm-mm. I -mm -mm. get what I can off of there. I don't want a whole lot of skin in here, but a little's not bad. It gives good flavor. I definitely want to make sure and get all the bones out. That looks good. Pull some of the skin off. Yeah, the wings are starting to cool off enough where I can handle them. I'm not burning myself. That chicken breast, though, that's what's going to be kind of hard to handle. That's all good. All right, now to get the breast meat off of there. And, wow, I can run my fork right through that breast meat. I'll go ahead and pull. I definitely want to pull that skin off. Don't need all that. There's enough fat in the broth there with that stick of butter and what rendered out of the chicken I don't need to add all that in there oh yeah that's good stuff right there pull that out and I'm just gonna pop it all right in there in the bowl for now and then I'll shred it up here in a minute but while I'm doing that I need to bring this up to a boil so I hit my sears saute function go and start that's also going to help me to let that breast cool off a minute because what we need to do now is remember we used a cup and a half of broth with the chicken now we're going to use a whole lot more broth and that is 12 cups of broth and if you're doing your math and I think I did my math right that's three 32 ounce boxes of chicken broth that is a lot of broth but I'm telling you those noodles are going to soak it all up. There we go. And one more. Oops, drop that cap on the floor. I'll grab that here in a minute. Oh, yeah. There's 32 ounces of chicken broth right there. I'm going to bring up to a boil while I finish deconstructing my chicken. Now some of this chicken meat is a little bit of work to get to, like the back. There's not that much meat on the back of a chicken, but that rib meat is really, really good meat. Very flavorful meat. And again, my house, I can do what I want. Mm. And I definitely don't want to waste this meat, so I'm going to pull every bit off that I can. Just make sure, again, watch what you're doing. Make sure that you don't get any bones in there because that's one thing that isn't good in a 
a home cooked dish is when you get the bones so you gotta watch out for them and that pretty much deconstructed that chicken the rest of this is all fat and skin and bone except for little pieces there I'll go back through here just to make sure we don't miss any a little bit of meat off the neck and it's just a good mix of, of light and dark meat normally when we do chicken and noodles or any kind of a chicken dish you know we prefer the dark meat that's just we, what we are we're a dark meat family um, but uh, it's a whole chicken so you're gonna get the breast in there too and I like the contrast between the two it kind of varies the bites up not everything's dark meat and there's different flavors in the breast than there are in the dark meat and I could do this in a standalone mixer but it's one less thing I gotta clean so I'm just gonna go through here with a fork and kind of shred up this chicken just kind of pull especially the breast I want to make sure and definitely get it shredded up good that way when it goes back in the broth here in a little bit and boils up it'll even make it more tender more juicy and then that buttery broth that's in there will just kind of soak into that meat and I'm really, really looking forward to cooking those noodles. I am so looking forward to this. I haven't had my mom's version of chicken noodles in probably years. Well, I think ever since I made the blog post for it, for um, goodness gracious, and that's been probably four years ago, something like that. So I'm about due for some good chicken and noodles here, y'all. But you just want to shred it up so that every time you get a bite of noodles, you definitely get a good bite of chicken but not a huge hunk of it and it really doesn't take that long that much longer to shred this up with a fork that as it would with fewer to do it in the standalone mixer it's one less thing I've got to wash later yeah that's good okay so what I want to do now is I'm going to let this broth come to a boil. I'm going to clean up my station and then I've got to get the rest of dinner ready. So that's going to happen in three, two, one. All right. So I've got some corn going on the stove. My chicken's already shredded up, ready to go. And now the next step is to bring this to a rolling boil, which we've done. And you want to make sure when you throw these in there, you kind of go one by one, you know, make sure they get separated so they don't fall in in clumps and stick together. It's really, really hot too. So you got to be careful. Ooh, that's hot. But you want to drop those in there. And when you're going to look at this and say, man, that's a lot of liquid for not so many noodles. But you'll start to see those noodles are starting to swell up already. And they're going to soak up a lot of that broth. That meat will soak up a lot of that broth. And then that residual flour that's left on those noodles is also going to help to thicken that broth up too. Got to make sure and keep it stirring too. And you want to boil this for about 20 minutes until your noodles get cooked all the way through and they're, in al, and they're al dente. And that should take about 20 minutes. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch it. I'm going to get these rolls ready so you'll come back and see that in 3, 2, 1. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm doing rolls in our foodie oven over here. So I want to see how well this works. I've never done rolls in a toaster oven like this before. And I know the foodie oven's more than a toaster oven, but it's like a toaster oven on steroids. So I'm gonna try these crescent rolls. And these are just Pillsbury Grands uh, crescent rolls. They're not sponsoring us. I just know they're real good. But I'm gonna see one if I can get a full can, tin, roll, whatever you wanna call it of these. I should be able to. And that just told me that it's already warmed up and ready to go. But all I'm gonna do is put that, I set it on the bake feature and it's going to go for it's it says on the on the uh the tin the roll the can you know what i'm saying the container it says to go at 350 for 12 to 15 minutes i know that's what you're supposed to do in a regular oven in the foodie oven i'm not going to tempt fate so i'm going to set it for 12 minutes and then take my eye on it and uh just to make sure that we don't burn these rolls because I don't get rolls very often so I want some good flaky delicious rolls you'll also see that I put my foodie lid on top of my foodie it's not attached 
or else this thing will not come to a boil because it'll sense the lid and it'll shut off. I've just got it setting on top. I don't know if that's breaking the rules or not. Again, my house is what I'm going to do, but I wanted to bring that heat back up on that broth a little quicker. So, all right, these rolls fit in there. Look at that. I can keep them separated. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rolls. Give them all a little space. And they fit in the basket. Perfect. So we'll go over here. It's already preheated for 350. And then I'm going to set my time at 12 minutes. Take my lid off of here. That is coming to a rolling boil and stay in there. That's good. Don't forget, you need to constantly stir. Oh, good. That was in a bowl. That's good. You need to constantly stir because even though this is a non-stick bowl or a non-stick insert, with that much heat that's going on, you want to make sure and not tempt fate. And let me show you what this looks like now. Now, a minute ago, you couldn't even see those noodles because there was so much broth. And those noodles have plumped up and they're really soaking up all that broth. And that's only been after about five minutes in there. So here in about another 15, that should be really thickened up. And if you want it thicker, you could always take a little bit of flour or cornstarch later and mix in there and that'll thicken it up. But I'm thinking that right there is just about perfect. Okay, so we've got about a minute and a half left on the rolls. They're really, really browning up. And the noodles are getting plumper and plumper. I did think that possibly, for some reason, that might be a little thin. So I put maybe about a tablespoon of uh, flour in there and sprinkled it in just to kind of thicken it up, but it helped it quite a bit. Something else that's about to help thicken this up is going to be putting this chicken back in. See if I can carefully do this without boiling myself alive. There we go. Oh, that came out real easy. And I'll mix this chicken in. And that's also going to help soak up some of that broth. But right now, it kind of looks like a chicken soup. But again, we've got about another five minutes left for this to keep boiling and cooking up those noodles. But now, about 30 seconds out, I'm going to go ahead and check these rolls. Uh, I'm going to call that done now. Those are brown. So we'll shut the power off. Bring the rolls out. Set that sheet so it's easier to handle. Shut that off. And... Oh, that's hot! Whew, look at this. That's crescent rolls. The Pillsbury crescent rolls in the foodie air fryer oven done on the baking feature. I did it just like the instructions said to do, only they got pulled out with about 30 seconds to spare. And let's see how they come off here. Okay, so the wire mesh might not be the best idea because some of it comes off. So it'd probably be done better on, a, on the baking sheet that I just set that on. Yeah, because that's going to be fun to clean up. So don't use the wire mesh. You learn as you go. Oh, those chicken noodles look so good. The other thing about this, y'all, is these will even thicken up more uh, in the leftovers. Overnight, they will thicken up quite a bit. Of course, you've got the, the fat from the butter and the fat from the chicken. That's going uh, to get solidified overnight. And then tomorrow these noodles will be even better but I'm gonna call these yeah they'll be done by the time I'm done with the rest of this what I'm gonna do now is give my mashed potatoes my Boba Vons mashed potatoes when you say it like that it sounds a lot more fancy than Bob Evans but they really do do a good job with these mashed potatoes so I've heated them up once I'll give them a stir. Back in the microwave for a couple minutes. Mm, I don't know what to do with this spoon. I guess I'll clean that up later. I'm going to get me a plate ready. 
then I also need to test these noodles to make sure they've got enough salt and pepper because I didn't put that much seasoning in there. In fact, I could probably just do it with a broth. Eh, let's grab a noodle too. Now these are going to be extremely hot, so be careful. Mm. Alright, the noodles are done. But they do need quite a bit of salt. And again, you can also salt this on your own, depending on how much salt you're guests or your family or whoever's eating this want, but I definitely wanted some more salt in that. So we'll give that a stir. That's done. So now I've got 45 seconds left. Oh, I can still clean off my spoon. got 45 seconds left and then I'll have the mashed potatoes ready. The noodles are cooked all the way through. They've got a chew to them because they're al dente. They're not mushy, but they don't have that floury taste. And so if you bite into these and it still tastes like flour, like raw flour does, let them go for a little bit longer. But that's really good. Now, yes, I know I'm double dipping with my spoon. My house, my rules. I'll taste this broth. They could use a little bit more salt and that is a big batch of noodles too so and my potatoes are done that's a good thing because that means it's time oh. computer stop because with my mashed potatoes done and my noodles are done and my corn is done, and my rolls are done, I'm done. At least done enough to get me something to eat. And the way I like to have mine is stir up these taters, and I like mine all together. So I'll take a good helping of mashed potatoes right there make a pit and then I'll take me let me get this spoon out of the way mm. good now I'll take my slotted ladle and get me a good helping of noodles and chicken you got dark meat in there you got white meat in there good mix of everything grab me a couple more noodles here there and then I will grab corn straight out of the can get another spoon I don't even make it artistic make it look like I'm a gourmet home cook chef and it'll go right along the outside of my potatoes Gordon Ramsay, eat your heart out. Just like that. Get me one of these rolls. Don't use the wire mesh. And ladies and gentlemen, that's dinner. That is home cooked dinner. Mostly made from scratch. Hey, the chicken and noodles is all from scratch. Nothing out of a box there. But I'm gonna get me a noodle, a little piece of chicken, and this is gonna be super, super hot, so you gotta be careful. That's memories from childhood, y'all. That's mama's chicken and noodles. Mm. With mashed potatoes and corn. 
just like a good Sunday dinner we used to have when I was a kid. Y'all, that is super good. That is worth the time and effort to make. If you're gonna spoil yourself at home with good comfort food, take the time and do it right because the reward is so good. Mmm. Oh! I gotta try this roll. See how the roll did. Yep, flake in the middle. It's done in the middle. All right, flake on the outside and done in the middle. Mm. Okay. I'll tell y'all right now, that Foodie Digital Air Fry Oven has been a great investment. Uh, we've done rolls now in it. Um, we've done a few other things that we've tried to air fry in there. And there, I think it really works. Um, in an upcoming episode, we're gonna show you guys uh, the foodie, the digital oven, and the grill, and talk through uh, all of the all of the features that we like about each one, what we don't like about each one, and which one we think is the best one. Uh, but that'll be coming up in a new episode here in about a week. But until then, thanks for letting me hang out with you guys, test out my gadgets, and see if they hold up to my mama's cooking. And they do. Mm. And if you like this episode, or all the other episodes here on this channel, if you would, give us a like down below. Also, if you have not become a member of the Crock Posse, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Become a welcome member of our Crock Posse. If you want to know as soon as we put up a new video, all you got to do is click the ding -a which is that little bell next to the subscribe button, and that lets YouTube know that you want to know as soon as we put up a new video. Most important, y'all, laugh often, eat good food. Or in this case, eat mama good food. And speak life. Bye, y'all. Mm. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny enough to send us money, click the Patreon.